So the next uh, step with interfacing is palette. Remember, I haven't cut it. Uh, I just designate the piece of fabric which it which uh, will be used for. I mean those pieces. So uh, before, but before I cut it, remember I told you I'm going to fuse it. So this is my bolt. This is the bolt of my pen. One on one. Uh, okay, let me grab this pins. What I need to do, I need to cut a piece of the center facing. And uh, okay, I just need to find my right and wrong side. One more time, this is the wrong side. And I'm lucky enough because it just fits. Oh, just a little bit, but it's okay. Oh, thank you. It's always nice when you don't need to wiggle your pieces. Uh, but, okay, uh, one more time. You really need to maintain the green line. See what I'm doing? I'm just roughly cutting the piece of interfacing. And for some reason, I can see some marks on this side. So it might be, oh yes, this is the right side. Ooh, ooh. So this is the right size and that one was the wrong side. Okay. Okay, and what I want, I really want to get rid of those pieces because I don't like to get them stuck onto my table because I will flip them. I will flip this piece over so the glue will be sitting next to my ironing board, which is not good. This is why i cutting those pieces out. Trash. Okay, take away, put it away, put it aside. Okay, so and now I'm going to fuse it. Well, you can fuse it from this side for sure, and actually, it's even better. You protect your fabric. What I really want to put make sure that you have nothing like no one thread between this layer and this layer because trust me how I know it happened to me once, you know, if I didn't pay attention, if I don't pay attention to like what is between, and then after you glue your interfacing onto a piece, there is no way to get it out. So, and um, trust me, most likely it will be visible from the right side. So please, please, please make sure you have nothing <laughs> between these two layers okay let's fuse it once again i'm not going to use any press cloth and uh, with this type of interfacing you definitely need to use some steam because steam helps to melt the glue and see, I steamed and then I go with the uh, pressure, light pressure and time. Okay, and once again, make sure you do not create any waves or air bubbles. And yes, like one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes they, um, they, you know, manufacturer, they play, they put the description, how long should you hold your iron in order to melt the glue. For me, you know, usually like five, seven seconds works well, but sometimes five is not enough, especially with the heavy weight ones. Move it a little bit. Okay, now let me move my jacket. Okay. 
Okay. I recommend to let it cool because sometimes when it's really um, hot and you pick it out from the table, you can uh, destroy the connections between uh, the interfacing and fabric. So it's really good idea to let it cool. I would say like one, two minutes, even five minutes better. Sometimes when I, you know, if, not, if I'm not recording, if I'm just sewing by myself, I, you know, the way that I usually work, um, I usually, you know, place all pieces over my table and I fused everything, I mean, as much as possible, as many as possible on the table, and then I fuse it. Then I let it sit and just go away and do something else. You know, stitch something, you know, baste something or, you know, clean the pattern. So it's something which, you know, lets um, my fabric being cooled down. Okay. So, and since we are waiting for cooling down, I wanted to talk about the pockets. So these are my two pockets. Uh, actually, I haven't decided uh, do I want to have two of them or just one? Um, I, you know, most likely I will have just one, but we'll see. Uh, so I need to prepare my pocket also before I move on to the stitching. And let me lightly move it out, and I'm going to show you what I'm what I'm what I mean by saying that. So this is my pocket. Uh, once again, let me find the right and wrong sides. It's so hard. It's like almost like a double sided, <laughs> but it is the difference. So um, if you have a pattern like mine and it has some measurements, right? Uh, I wonder how I cut it. So let's see how I cut it. So it's bigger because I need to have a fold on the top. So this is what I'm going to create. I'm going to um, fold it once. See, and I'm going. To, I'm not going to use a pins or basting. I mean, you can if you want to, but I wanted to save my time. So, and I know, I know, I'm I'm good at it, so I can do it without any, you know, basting or pinning. can see it from my point right now you may not see it but I see it okay see and I you know I'm pretty good at eyeballing so but you can use you know the ruler or measuring tape in order to do so so this this is my first one I just the way how I like it so then I'm going to fold the bottom and uh, you can you know fix the edges by surging the edges but uh, I decided not to do so. Uh, th th this pocket is not like functional. It's mostly like, um, you know, the decorative purpose. Sort of the decorative purpose. 